I have an example of a visual schedule right here. I wanted to explain to you how we're gonna, how we can use one and how we can use it with your preschooler at home and also why they can be useful or why we would use something like this. So first I just wanna say that um, visual schedules are really helpful for preschoolers to establish routines at home. Um, we all know about the, our kiddos when they get focused in one thing that they're, they're liking to do and they don't wanna move on to the next thing. And then you get, you get fits and you get meltdowns and you get all kinds of things and your day gets off kilter. Um, we also have um, preschoolers who might be on the autism spectrum and this can be another, um, this can be a challenge for them to get through daily routines. Um, and so this can provide a structure. The thing about it is it provides a visual um, representation for kids and that is super helpful because they can understand by when we say it's time to get dressed, if they see this little symbol that's got clothes on it and a little person, that just is another way to provide input as and meaning as to what we're talking about, getting dressed. Oh yeah, clothes and a person, let's do that. And it just it can also just bring their mind out of what they're doing onto something else. Um, so providing that visual and then um, another really big thing about this is it creates some a sense of control for our kids and I'll show you how I would use this with a kiddo. I'm gonna get my own daughter in here and she's gonna pretend to be a toddler with me or a preschooler and I'm gonna show you how you can you can have them have some control with this and that gives you a lot of a lot more buy-in with your kiddo. If they feel like they have some control it's going to potentially make things a lot smoother. So there's lots of different types of visual schedules that can be used. Um, you can find hundreds online. I'm just going to show you a couple today. Um, this works well with preschoolers. It's pretty simple. So what I have here is um, I have two columns and this is just two laminated pieces of paper and I have all of these little um, pictures. So each picture represents a certain um, task or part of the day. This one is eating breakfast. So this picture of a little guy eating breakfast. I've got um, numerous different representations and you can create your day however you want. You can also have your preschool help, preschooler help you create your day. Um, you can kind of have as much control over this as you want and let them do as much as, as it works, I should say. Um, so we've got eating breakfast on this one. We've got brushing teeth, getting dressed, doing some homework, tablet time. I know you all know about that. Um, eating lunch, going outside for playtime, eating dinner. And then we get to putting on pajamas and kind of a nighttime routine, putting PJs on, reading a book, going to bed. Like I said, you can put this however you want. Um, and you may have lots of other types of um, parts of your schedule that you want represented okay, that so you'll need. I might say, Finley, what are we doing first today? Breakfast. Eating breakfast. Let's go eat breakfast. And then say we go eat breakfast, okay? We can come back and we can look at our schedule again. Nice job. What's next, Finn? What's next on the list? Brush teeth. Brush, <clears throat> brush teeth and then we'll get dressed. Some of these make really good sense to double them up. You don't have to do that. You could just put all of them in a single line if you want. These two make sense for me to just kind of put them together because we're gonna go back there. Your kiddo might go back to their room and their bathroom's there too. You don't wanna have to come back out to the schedule, right? So you can talk about, let's go brush teeth and get dressed. This is also a nice opportunity to bring in kind of a first then concept. So if you're working on something that you want them to do first and then they follow up with something else, like look at this next one. My next one is, is do homework and then tablet time. Okay, so we might be struggling with getting our kiddos to do other things besides tablet time, right? So this is a great opportunity to give them a visual of let's get our homework done first, 
then you can have tablet time. Another thing you could do, take these with you, okay? You're at your schedule, let your kiddo grab them. Let's go, let's take our pictures and let's go do our things, right? So you go and now you're in the bedroom and you've got some visuals to help you. you maybe you've got a kiddo who really hates getting dressed, okay? Visuals are super helpful for kids, okay? Just reminders. Um, we get into your bedroom, you get in the bedroom, and he starts playing with his toys already. Oh my gosh, what the heck? We can't get dressed, you know? Need some help here. So use this, you know? No, Finley, remember? First, we're getting dressed. Then we gotta brush our teeth. Just, it's another way to get them to come back. Come back and refocus a little bit. So, all right. We got our teeth brushed and we're all dressed. Give these to your kiddo and say, hey, we're all done. Nice job, you did both. Let's go put it on your schedule. Put them up there. Yep, we got dressed. And what else did we do? Brushed. You brushed your teeth. Look at that, it's another opportunity for language right here. So each one of these is associated with a really important um, some really important words that you are teaching your kids every time you use these. Getting dressed, brushing teeth, eating breakfast. These are all functional concepts that kids are hearing and learning all day long. These are the words we expect them to be saying, right? When they're ready to say words, we expect it to be all about these things. I think a lot of kids look forward to eating. So again, they can see when that eating time is gonna happen. Maybe, um, you know, I don't have a snack in here, but snacks are big for most kids. Um, you've got a snack way down here. They can see, oh, first I have to do this. First we're gonna do outside play, and then we can eat dinner or have our snack or whatever that meal time is. It's something kids really look forward to, most of them. All right, and I'll uh, talk, talk about another style in just a second. So this is more of a game board kind of a concept. So there's a start to it and then there's a finish. And so the idea is just that the child, your child would come over and identify which um, routine picture was appropriate for the moment and grab it. Um, and then they would go ahead and put it right at the, at the square and then they would kind of go in order um, through their day putting them over here. And that just gives them a kind of this, another sense of completion, kind of like the other board. It was just more all on one board. This one is there, it's like they're playing a game. Um, some kids just might be more motivated by that. They finish it up down here and it's like, woohoo, we finished our day. And you guys can have a little mini celebration. Um, once again, it's just a bunch of Velcro on the squares. One thing you could do is you could number each picture you know, if you decided, um, you you decide on the order. Um, again, you and your child can come up with the order. You can be as creative as you want um, and give your child as much control as you want to and whatever works. But you could number them one um, so that your child might be able to identify, oh, the one goes with the one if they're not understanding the go and order concept. And of course, you don't have to use every square. There, this one just gives a lot of options because there might be a lot of things you have going on in your day. Um, you can just skip squares as need be, so it doesn't have to go in the same order, but you can do you know, every other one or, or whatever works. So anyway, I just wanted to show you another way of completing a visual schedule.